Hey everybody, it's Atlas again. Uh, God, the back at it again thing just can't escape us, can it? Uh, another Grey Nature deck profile. Um, so, Tech Booster 2 came out, and I've had sufficient time to test all of the success cards. Was I successful? Kinda. Um, so, so far, I, I have three different Grey Nature deck profiles that you'll be seeing in the, in the next few weeks or so, but uh, starting now is... Uh, Big Belly. So, um, starting off, we have Telescope Rabbit. Uh, I know I gave this guy flack in previous deck profiles, and I'm sorry. Uh, his skill is uh, Forerunner, and then Act. You can Counterblast and Rest him to give something a dope. Um, with this guy, that means we don't have to run as much um, like Compass Lines or stuff to give us mid-game retires, because we can just use him, because he's always available. You don't have to draw into him. Um, I ran an iteration of the deck with stand triggers, which made him kind of even better, because then you could go, all right, rest and dope something, and then attack with Vanguard first, get the stand trigger. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's terrible without stand triggers, it's just that's a neat little perk. Um, if you don't like him, you can run Pencil Koala, which is the dude where if he boosts an attack that hits, you can give a dope in life insurance. Um, I just have, like, this guy is uh, less, less so much retire bait, they don't really care that often, and if they do kill him, fine. I have other stuff I can play. Um, next up for the grade threes, we have four copies of Famous Professor Big Belly. You guys remember him from last time. Um, so his GB2 skill is when he attacks Vanguard, you, uh, in a very Leopold uh, type fashion, you can give something a dope, meaning the plus 4,000 and retire at end phase, and life insurance. Um, a quick note about the way life insurance works in this build is that a lot of it has the, it has the wording, draw a card and retire that unit. That is very different from when this unit is put in drop zone in your end phase, draw a card. That means that if you have stuff that bounces or is still around at the end phase, it means you can still get the draw because of the way Vanguard works with you try and resolve as much of the skill as possible. <clears throat> so uh, his other skill is when you stride on top of him, you can counter blast one, you choose two rear guards and they get the red tech skill. If they boost or uh, attack and hit a vanguard at 20,000 or more, so kind of, it's like a proto success type of thing. Um, if, so if they have that skill and they hit, you get to draw a card. So you can uh, have some pressure with, you know, your cards you laid out early game, like your starter, where you can give, make them a 9k booster and then if he boosts and hits, you draw a card. Um, if you use the Stride Fodder to search for a copy of him, and you have the Stride Fodder just sitting there, that's another thing you can use. Um, I'm kind of annoyed that he doesn't have the Alt Mile Clause, where you can just call from hand and then do it. Like, Gaia Emperor has it, but him and Yasui don't, so that's annoying. But the Stride Skill is one of those things where if you don't get it, it's not the end of the world, so that's pretty... it's a good and bad thing about it. Um, next up we have two copies of... Horton, here's a crit. Um, his skill is GB1. Once per turn, when he attacks a Vanguard, you can uh, counterblast one, restand a rear guard, uh, that's not him, and dope it. So uh, this can be used on Van or rear guard circle, which means he's not that bad of a backup ride. You can also just call him from hand and start attacking with him, which is great. It puts you know extra pressure without having to use stand triggers. Um, he looks really funny, and. Uh, it, it, the same rules apply from the last time I ran the deck, uh, except now we have two copies of Honorary Professor Chat Noir, the Break Ride. Um, so her skill is when you ride, ride on top of her at Limit Break, your Vanguard gets plus 10k, and then gets the Red Tech skill, meaning that if you Break Ride, you cannot stride and keep the Break Ride skill, which is a bummer. But it's still a pretty good break ride skill, which is uh, when, for that turn, when a rear guard attacks a vanguard, you can then, or is it attacks a vanguard or just attacks? Yeah, attacks a vanguard. You choose a rear guard, so that can be itself, it can be a different rear guard. And that chosen unit gets plus 4,000 and a life insurance. So that means you can be attacking, you can restand stuff and get all these dopes and life insurances off, and then at the end it dies and you draw three, four, maybe five cards. Um, in the build with the stand triggers, it was even crazier, but that makes more sense in one of the other, one of the other builds you'll see here. Um, 
another reason that you run this is because G guards make it so you can uh, get the brake ride with Big Belly and get his GB2 off, so you can have a turn of twin drive but still get a bunch of life insurance draws at the end. Um, and also, uh, there's a stride that goes with her that's like super good, so we'll get to that later. Um, next up we have four copies of Crayon Tiger. Again, you remember this from before. It is an Amber clone that when it is boosted and attacks Vanguard, you can counter blast, restand the Great Nature rear guard, not counting him, and it gets plus 4k and then draw and retire at the end phase. So this adds more pressure where if you attack with a rear guard, then attack with Vanguard, stack your triggers on that rear guard, then use Crayon Tiger to restand it, it's it's coming for them. Um, it's probably the, one of the more expensive cards in Great Nature right now, which is a bit of a bummer, but that's okay. Uh, I, I highly recommend four. If you end up having three, then you're going to have to compensate with other stuff, but th there's not much you can do. Um, next up, we have four copies of Field Glass Otter. This is my favorite new success card. So, uh, the way success works, it is a keyword that when a rear guard hits a threshold, like 20,000, 25,000, uh, every, you know, Rear guard with the keyword uh, becomes successful, so it's a state kind of like blazing or burst or whatever. So he's a success card that if he uh, if he hits success at twenty thousand at the end phase, you can bounce him. So that plays into his other skill, which is uh, on call GB one. You can give something a dope, so you can call him dope something, and then when he's successful, you can bounce him and then call him the next turn and do it again. What's really cool is that the su success is not GB1. So, with that telescope rabbit from before, you can have a 7k boost, and you use the rabbit to dope otter. Then when you boost with the rear guard, it becomes a 20,000 column, which means you hit success. And then at the end phase, you bounce the otter before he dies. So, this is very fun in that you can stack all your dope and life insurances on here, get your draws because it's draw and retire as opposed to when it put in drop zone, and then put him in hand before, you know, things get ugly. Um, so I, I'm a huge fan of him as a four of. Uh, next up, we have two copies of Sleepy Taper. I'm still kicking myself for selling my binoculars tigers, but... That's life, I guess. Uh, his skill is uh, on rear guard circle. When he attacks a vanguard, you can dope something. And then he also has resist. So that's really useful for early game. You can like plunk this and the otter down and then do the thing I was mentioning before. Just attack, dope the otter, bounce him at the end. Um, and then on top of that, if you're playing against like a Link Joker heavy type meta, you can use a combination of this and the otter to either keep stuff unlockable or an open rear guard circle. Um, What's interesting about this build is that the grade two lineup is very flexible. So you can, based on your local meta, you can run, you know, a more aggressive early game. You can run, if you're playing, if you have a more Shadow Paladin heavy, uh, heavy meta, you maybe cut down on this because the resist units, you know, you can't retire them for Phantom Blaster Diablo. Um, next up we have You're Not My Real Mom, AKA Problem Child Greybelly. This is my favorite art. Um, so he, he's got like the bamboo neck guitars, pam, panda eye things look like emo makeup, it's awesome. So uh, his skill is success 20k. When he attacks a vanguard, GB1, if he's successful, you can soul blast one, pick two units and give them a dope and a life insurance. Um, so again, this feeds into the field glass otter where you can, you know, dope him and then get him out of the way before he gets into trouble. He's also a good uh, dope target in that Maybe, you know, you'd put, you stack all your stuff on here and you, you know, use his skill to dope uh, another card that's coming up later. Um, also, Great Nature didn't really care about the soul before now, so this makes use of it. Um, I don't really have much else justification. He's just, he's fun. Uh, onto the grade ones. So that was 12 grade twos, you'll notice. Um, so that means our grade ones are as follows. So I have one coiling duck bill. Used to be four. So, because his life insurance still is when something hits drop zone, you draw instead of draw and retire. This is a very kind of static uh, Great Nature deck, which means that this is more of a tech card as opposed to the crux of the engine. 
Um, so you know what it was before. Um, if you want, you can also swap this out for a Mike Saburo and then run less grade threes. Like if you want, if you don't want to grab Chad Noirs, you can do like four Big Belly, three uh, Horton, and then one you know Mike Saburo. So that's fine. Uh, next up, we have another very important success unit: scholarship student Ari Belly. Um, so. His still is it, the important still is if you have a big belly vanguard, this cannot be retired by card effects, which is awesome. So Kondoro can't do anything. Um, and then the important part is you can stack all, stack all your dopes and life insurances and get all the draws without any of the retire. His other still is if he boosts a success, uh, success unit, you can soul blast one and give that unit plus 4k. That's not really that good. You want to save it for gray belly or for Hrimthers, but he's he's amazing. So four up. Um, then we have four Stride Fodder. It's a G deck focusing around Big Belly. The Stride Fodder searches him. We kind of know how that is. Uh, then we have four Shellmaster, which is the GPG, the unflippy PG. Um, in the Fox in the Fox Legion build, you have more of an unflip engine, but in here you you're kind of starving for it. Um, so. In this in this way, the you know unflipper PG is probably your best option. Um, on top of that, your rear guards are usually gone. So and you have dismal. There's not really a reason to not run unflippy PGs anymore. Um, for the traders, we have uh, I have three Castanet donkey. So he's a Margol clone. You can shove and soul give something plus three K. Uh, it's a draw trigger. I don't like doing the 10-2, it just didn't feel right. If you want to do 10 crit 2 draw, fine with me, but I, I, it just feels better to have the 9-3. I'm not sure why. Um, it's kind of unprofessional. Then, like I said, we have 10 crits, so that's 5 other crit. You can do any art you want to. I just like the way Holder Hedgehog looks, and I like to confuse people. Um, then we have... For Pond Belly, who is the Heart Thumb clone. Um, we do care a little bit more about the soul in this build, and also it is fun to stack a bunch of dopes on here, and then when you attack with Big Belly, put him in soul, get a draw. Um, so he's, he's a very important card. Like, if you're running even the Stride Fusion of something, like, let's say I, let's say I was running the Fox build, I still run the Big Belly Stride, which means there is a time and place where I could use this. If not, I will use it as a 10k shield. Usually these are like anywhere between one and three dollars depending on the clan, so I highly recommend getting them for the deck. Uh, then for heal triggers, I don't think this really needs explaining. Um, it's not any kind of rush deck, so, you know, good. Just probably move that off. Okay, um, onto the strides. So starting off, I have uh, Lifetime Honorary Professor Sylvest. If he's Lifetime and Honor... Just give him tenure already. Anyway, so his skill is he's success 25,000. Um, and then his other skill is if he, you have three or more rear guards, he gets plus 10k during your turn. Store. He is a really good first stride in that typically you're going to have your field, even if it's just half a field, he's a uh, 36k attacker. That's crazy. And then his other skill is uh, 25k or more, if, uh, or success 25k, if a rear guard hits. 25,000, you draw a card. Doesn't matter when. So if you stack triggers on something, then attack with it, and that's the 25 mark, you draw right then. So this thing is good for like a first strike. Then we have Primthers, who I was talking about earlier. So his skill is uh, after he attacks, you can Soul Blast, give something 4k. Then you can give it 4k again, but if you do that second one, it would kill it. And then if a rear guard hits 20,000 or more, this is separate from the first effect, you draw a card. So this thing is also good as a first stride, but if, you're, if, you're, you know, if your rear guards aren't gonna die for whatever reason, like, you know, if, if it's Ari Belly or something, then the, Sylvest is the better option as the first stride. But there are turns where this is relevant, so that's good. Uh, I was talking earlier about this, uh, Kath Palud, so she works if you have a uh, honorary professor heart, which means Chat Noir. Um, when a rear guard attacks Vanguard, you can counter blast ch and choose a rear guard, be it itself or someone else, and give it a dope and a life insurance. So you're basically counter blasting to get that break ride skill. 
Um, so if someone rushed you and you have like four or five damage and you rode Chatnoir, you can stride into this and then like put some pressure on them and then recoup your losses and then you can probably weather the storm going later. Uh, if you end up just riding Big Belly, you can flip this with another stride where we'll see later. So, she's good. Um, we have Omniscient's Dragon Aflac. Okay, it's a font, but it looks like a duck. Aflac. So, the skill is act. You can counterblast, flip up a copy of something in G-Zone, and then uh, a funk himself gets plus 4,000 for every rear guard. So if you have a full field, that's plus 20k. And then all of your rear guards get the skill. This cannot be killed by card effects this turn. So that means you can get all your draws and your life insurances and stuff without killing anything. But on top of that, this is a thorn in the side of Kodoro. Um, I tried to fit two in here, but I couldn't really do it. If you can find a way to do it, good on you. But um, this thing makes it so Denial Griffin and Defeat Flare can eat a dick. So, all right. Um, we have two Omniscient Striding Mana Guard. You probably remember this from last time. You counterblast one, flip up a copy, choose two rear guards, they get plus 4k, and then uh, they get the skill if they're attacking at 20k or more, the opponent can't guard with great ones or higher. So this lost a, a few steps with G guards coming around, but if you know that they're hoarding perfect guards, this is the per perfect thing to survive them, or surprise them, to surprise them. So uh, he's still he's down at two, but he's still really useful. Um, he's probably not as expensive anymore, so pick him up while you still can. And then we have four Big Belly, new Big Belly stride, super happy. Um, so his skill is GB2, he can counterblast, flip up a copy of himself, and then for ev choose a rear guard, and for every copy, or no, for every face-up card in G-Zone, so that means if you G-guard it a lot, this gets a lot better, that unit gets plus 4k, so you're probably going to hit your success skills like that. And then you can also choose a unit, be it Vanguard or Rearguard, and give it the red tech skill. When it hits Vanguard, you can choose any number of rear guards, uh, any number of other units and stand them. So typically what you want to do is give the on-hit skill to the rear guard you doped in the first place if you have Crayon Tiger, so you can just keep the pressure up. But if you want to, if you do this like mid-game stride, as a mid-game stride, you probably want to give it to Big Belly so you can just restand the field again. Um, in either case, it works both as like wearing down the opponent and as a finisher. I highly recommend you pick up your four. Uh, I don't think there's really much else I need to say about it. It's amazing. Um, we have Sea Breeze. It is a, uh, it's a G deck, and sometimes people can't ride to grade three, and you need to punish them for it. So, you know, if they didn't, if they're on grade two and didn't ride, uh, ride last turn, you can counter last two, drop any card, get this, and then you get your GB1 skills off. So, yay for him. Typically, this is your unflip uh, target for a funk. So, good to know. Um, you'll notice that that was only 12 strides. And, sorry, yeah, 12, 12 strides because we have, or 11 strides, because we have five G guards. So starting we have Kundalini. Um, when you guard with him, you can pick a rear guard and give it the red tech still at the end of the turn, kill it off and counter charge. Um, that means if you pick Ari Belly, you can just counter charge at the end phase. So this is super good. And then in addition, we also have Ardillo, which is if uh, when you guard with him, you can kill any number of rear guards. And then if you have three or more open spaces, he gets plus 10k shield. So he's like a free screw, which is awesome. But, if you have Ari Bellies in the back row, they, and they literally cannot be killed, this is kind of useless. So that means this rises in utility, or this rises in utility based on the field you have, which is why there's two of each. And then lastly, we have Dismal, which uh, sometimes you want to protect your Crayon Tiger. So a lot of the time, these are used in a utilitous fashion rather than just having a static four lineup. And yes, there's no way to recycle heal triggers, but hey man, it's a toolbox. Do what you do what you gotta do. Um, worst case scenario, if the game lasts that long, you can start unflipping, you know, stuff like unflipping G guards with the funk. It's a thing you can do. So good to know. Um, so that was the uh, updated Big Belly success deck profile. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, we will be sure to comment or make fun of you. 
Um, and be sure to check out more deck profiles like this in the future. I'll see you all next time.